Bien Toulouse, welcome to reporters here on France 24. In this edition, Yaba, an illegal drug that's sweeping Southeast Asia. Our reporter has been to Cox's Bazaar, the Bangladeshi town near the border with Myanmar. There, the illegal trade in Yaba has led to over 60 major dealers being arrested and a clampdown on the police force because of the alleged involvement of some police officers. Well, Charles Emtaz is our reporter. Uh, Charles, how far have the police been implicated in this illegal trade? Some think they're completely implicated. A senior politician, Abdul Rahman, was arrested in 2016. They thought he was in control of all the drug trafficking and that the police were arresting his rivals. What we're definitely able to note is that the police are murdering a number of dealers in impunity every week. That's what we saw in the Cox's Bazaar region and in particular in Teknaf. Charles Mtes, thank you very much indeed. Let's uh, take a look then at his report. This story begins in Teknaf, in the south of Bangladesh. Like every week, the city's prosecutor is about to carry out an arrest. An informer gave a tip about drug users. They're taking Yaba, a popular type of methamphetamine that's been having a devastating impact across Asia. Good morning, gentlemen. They're here taking Yaba. Take them out of here. This is what they use to take Yaba. When you come out, put your hands up. In Bangladesh, this is called mobile justice, an expedited trial on site for people caught in the act. The floor is given to the witnesses. I've seen him taking drugs so many times. I want to testify. I ask them to stop at a residential area. So, can you explain what is happening? Why is writing on the... Yeah, actually, uh, we have seen that we have found them taking the drugs. Yeah, that's why we have captured them. And we need two witnesses at least so that we can keep them under trial. You, you and you, you're going to jail for six months. For you, it's four months in prison. Sir, I did not take Yaba. Shackle them together. I came here to beg. Yeah, sure. In a Yaba house? Come on, get up, let's go. It took less than one hour to put these men behind bars. One of the measures of the Prime Minister's war on drugs. I'm just a beggar. Unlike users, suppliers don't always have the opportunity of prison time. Here is a dealer. In this job, he risks a lot more than jail. The police are trying to kill us. Me, I'm a Rohingya. The government is only giving us rice. It's impossible to live with just that. So we deal yaba to eat. But if the police catch us, they kill us. We don't have weapons. They say we have guns, but it's not true. It's because they kill us that they say that. We only earn $60 a day. How could we buy weapons? This year, Technuff policemen have killed 117 people, averaging two killings a week. All the victims were accused of dealing drugs. None were given the right to a trial. Officially, the dead die in crossfire, but really it's executions. Since the Prime Minister declared a war on drugs, crossfire deaths have been constant. Victims are buried daily in Bangladesh. <laughs> Situated on the border, Teknef is the entry point for Yaba produced in Myanmar. Last year, authorities seized 53 million pills. I'm going to stop Yaba. I'm too scared to be killed by the police. They do crossfires all the time, so I'm hiding. (laughs) 
One morning in Teknaf, we learned that two suspects got killed. Another death in crossfire, according to the police. We checked the site only hours after the killing. In which direction is it? It's towards the cemetery. What's the name of the victims? You mean who got killed? Sohel and Noor. We were shown the house of one of the victims. Mohammed Sohel, 27 years old. His family just found out about his death. Sohel and his wife just came back to Bangladesh after working in Malaysia for years. Their daughter is only three months old. <laughs> In the village, the arrival of police woke everyone at 3 a.m. The execution took place a little further away in the fields. It was here. No body, no cartridges. Evidence has disappeared. The only other victim was shot here. Policemen shot a good 15 times. How many bullets they got, I don't know. But I heard about 15 shots. The other victim is called Nur Hafez. Leela, who lives next to the crime scene, heard his last words. We could hear the policemen asking the prisoners, where are the drugs? And the prisoners answered, I don't know. So they took them into the field. I heard him say, please don't kill me, don't kill me. And then the shooting started. After the killing, we saw the policemen looking for the bullets with their torches. Two days later, Bangladesh is celebrating its Independence Day. It's when we meet the police chief, Pradip Kumar. Since he started, the death rate has dramatically spiked. Do you have to make these explosions so loud? That's how we do it. What can I do? How to explain that Nur Hafez and Mohammed Sohail, two prisoners locked up under his responsibility, have been killed? The police chief is hesitant. What can he say to foreign journalists? When we went there, uh, then uh, some uh, terrorists attacked the police and police also, um, police also, uh, okay. and then police, uh, uh, police, uh, uh, then police protest them, and uh, and also we captured uh, we have to hand it to uh, uh, from the place and also uh, we took the lawful action against them. A lot of police officers also injured by the terrorists. Uh, police took uh, treatment from the hospital. Mentioning injured policemen is common when talking about crossfire. The police always pretends that the dealers were armed. To find out more, we visit his colleagues who were present that night. Here they're doing traffic stops, looking for Yaba.
Good evening. This is a check. Please get out. What do they have to tell us about the injured policeman that their chief was talking about? Can we meet the policeman injured? What's his name? What's his name? They're receiving treatment. They receive treatment. Now they are... Officer Kamrul Zaman. I think maybe it's Officer Kamrul Zaman and Officer Bishas. And our third colleague, uh, we forgot his name. Three policemen injured, that's two more than what their police chief said. Their stories don't match. We head to Cox Bazaar Hospital to check on the injured policemen. We talk to Dr. Abdul Rahman, who works with security forces. And more recently, did you have some policemen injured? No, not this month. We get, but not often. Not so often? Not so often. And how, how, what type of injury is it for the policemen? Uh, Mainly accidental cases, uh, but uh, we haven't uh, rec uh, recently received any gunshot or something like that. Nothing like that recently? No. There are also no signs of injured policemen in the hospital's registry. A photo was taken at the time of the arrest of Noor Hafez and Sir Hel, 24 hours before their death. We asked a forensic doctor to examine their bullet wounds. Oh, the distribution of gunshot wound is not consistent with crossfire. Can you explain why? Well, in, um, in a crossfire, people are usually caught or trapped because a lot of bullets flying. And the tracks that you see in the body are haphazard. They have extremity injuries, they have injuries to the arms, they have injuries to the head. Uh, but this is a central ma mass injury. By central mass, what we mean is that the central portion of the body is, is, is hit. Present on the day of their arrest, Noor's wife was immediately contacted by the police. I was with my husband when policemen arrested him. I showed them my child. I said he was only 20 days old. I begged them not to do a crossfire. I asked for their mercy. They said that it was not possible to keep him alive. I heard it well. They also said that if I want to save his life, I'd have to pay a million daka. They said, come with us and we'll see if we give you mercy. Racketeering by police forces is business as usual in Bangladesh. In a year and a half, almost a thousand Bangladeshis have been summarily executed. So, Yaba, a drug that brings euphoria, but after that, uh, some case of crashing downward. With that, some aggression is causing massive social problems and, of course, criminality. Charles Mtaz, our reporter, still with us. Um, Charles, I wonder, are there people, voices in Bangladesh, that are crying out against the violence that's happening? It's very difficult for people to speak out. The population's under surveillance, the press has been muzzled, and opponents are often arrested. People who speak out are pursued through the courts. That's the case of the person who's going to talk to us. He runs an NGO that keeps records of all the murders and the violence in Bangladesh. Bangladesh situation is like a state of exception, where nothing works independently where judiciary, law enforcement, uh, doctors who do the forensic work, or even the state-sponsored journalists, or National Human Rights Commission, all act together. They support each other. Santa Charles again. Uh, at the same time as this drug, Yaba, is crossing the border into Bangladesh. There are also lots of Rohingya refugees making that same journey, which I think raises two questions. Are these refugees being targeted by the drug trade, but also by the authorities, by the police? 
Yaba's presence in the region predates the flood of Rohingya refugees, a million of them in all. Of course, the dealers and smugglers use them to get drugs through. There's a small minority of Rohingya who deal the pills to the local population, and those dealers are naturally more vulnerable. They're prey, targeted more easily by the police, who can murder them in all impunity, without any kind of due process. Charles, is there any plan of help in any way for the families of the victims? No, there's no kind of help for the families, no hope of justice from their side. They're often victims again, for a second time, because the police continue to hassle them, something that sometimes extends to an entire village. And unless the legal system and the political system change, there can be no hope for families which have been victims of police violence, of violence from the state of Bangladesh itself. Charles Emtaz, thank you very much indeed. Charles report, of course, you can see it again via website francefancat.com. The revelations in that report, of course, raising many questions about uh, police brutality uh, in Bangladesh. The story will be following very closely here on France 24. This is Reporters. Stay with us. <laughs>